guess I've always been into movies. I've been excited about movies. I loved them. My whole family's watched them. And during COVID, I lost my job, just like a lot of people did. But um, I just kind of felt like there was a chance for me to just take a different avenue, a new career path. And so I decided to try film school out. And um, hopefully, whenever I can graduate film school, if I can make it and find a job, then I'm going to make it. But if I can't, I guess i got to move somewhere else and try again. Okay. Um, on the Alabama Film Office website online, you can go in there and see all of the incentives and the rebates that we actually get. But um, I reached out to Rob Wolf, um, law attorney, who um, was able to give me more information on that. And he gave me a... Rob gave me Wolf, a I am a uh, local businessman attorney developer in Birmingham. When I was doing property development management uh, in downtown Birmingham, uh, mid-20-teens. Uh, we kept on getting calls about, I have this film, I have this film, I have this film, and I tried to get resources, and honestly, I, I almost did not pick up the phone the last time uh, this guy called, but I did, and about a, two weeks later, Hollywood descended, and I fell in love with the process. Roughly half of the crew was pulled from Alabama. Uh, everybody had to fly in from LA or Atlanta. Very expensive, you have to pay per diem, you have to pay hotels, you have to pay airfare, you have to pay union off days, stuff like that. Um, where 22 years, uh, three years later, we had seven films going on at the same time in Alabama. Oklahoma or North Carolina, uh, LA, you come here to make films because it's it's property, it's business, it's professional, and it's uh, and also we see the we see the same people over and over again, same crew, same general producer, same accountants. Before COVID, we were about to ask the legislature to raise that because we had a lot of film going on at the same time. We're just now recovering after COVID, but um, but that's you know twenty million dollar cap. And each film has a cap to how much money they can they can qualify for. Because the, the Alabama wants to get level playing field. If you have a 20, thirty million dollar movie, they want also to support three million dollar movies and hundred hundred you know, one million dollar movies. If you spend five hundred thousand dollars or more on a on a major motion picture or. You can have several commercials or videos or TV series that equal $500,000. Once you hit that threshold, you qualify for our rebate. Our rebate is, is pretty decent. It's a tax incentive. Uh, roughly 25 cents on the dollar that you spend in Alabama, um, you get back as, as a tax rebate. Uh, 35 cents on the dollar for everybody you hire in Alabama. So there's a, there's a really good incentive that you could ever, ever want here. And one good thing about Alabama is this industry is so nascent that it's easy. It's easy to act, get access to cities, locations, municipalities, renting production offices. Um, in Atlanta, it's difficult. In LA, it's darn near impossible. There's so many, uh, so many hoops you have to jump through, but it's still easy here. Um, um, so to qualify for that, you have to produce your budget and the application with the Alabama Film Office in Montgomery. They look at it, they approve you, um, make sure your your uh, your financing is solid and, and you do have sources of income. And then they, they grant you the uh, a carve out of, of, of our, our limit on our on a rebate for the year. The crew system, we have locations that you would not believe. 
downtown Birmingham serve? Absolutely. Um, not only can um, I post my pro portfolio or my resume online on the Alabama Film Office website, but um, I was also able to uh, reach out to former directors that I have worked for, like Michael Casey, who actually moved his film from L.A. to Alabama for those incentive purposes. My name is Michael Casey. I'm a writer, director, and producer. Just be able to roll with the punches because planning as much as you can, get things before you start uh, rolling, like pre-production is incredibly important, but I think the way independent filmmaking's become, everything is such a time crunch. Film, filming has gotten shorter, ramp up time's getting short. Everything is just quick, 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 quick. So most, be as prepared as you can, but also just be willing to adapt and just kind of realize that your days are going to be crazy and. You just gotta have kind of a calm demeanor as much as possible. All right. It was happening prior, even prior to COVID because of the streaming services. Like originally, like Netflix and all that stuff opened up like so many other platforms for people to make films. But I think what ended up happening is so many films were made. And if you look at them, some of them are, you know, I'll never talk bad about a, a film because of how hard it is to get a film made. But now there's almost too many films and the streaming services know this and so they're paying less and less for the films mm -hmm. and that's the other part of like filming in these smaller areas it's just like um, the town is, is very usually that's been my experience anyways very welcoming and, and la like no one cares it's just all about money and right you know how much money can i get and you go to these smaller places and you just get the hospitality that you don't get in a lot of places so i think that was a big thing too at least we benefited from it i'm sure but i'm not sure if that was part of the planning or not but i'm glad that happened just get out there and start filming. No, no matter how much experience you have or little experience you have, just don't waste any time practicing. You're, you may not get it the first time, you may not get it the second time, you may not even get it the third time, but you will get it eventually. And practice, like they say, practice does make perfect. And this, in this industry, we're constantly changing and adapting to different things, different aspects, different technology, and so, you're constantly growing your mind, you're constantly growing your, ta your talent, your, your skills, everything. So just constantly get out there and keep practicing no matter what. Cut. That was good. I am Danny Vincent. I'm an actor. All right. Yay, me. Yay. We're, you know, I didn't even have an agent yet. I was doing production work and she kept calling about every three months with a new job. And uh, we, when Octavia went to Hollywood, we, uh, uh, I got her job. So. Uh, we went and did two couple more, and then I got an agent, and I never gave it two weeks. I honestly didn't. I figured I was going to be back doing a, a stand-in gig, handling, wrangling extras, you know, uh, which is what they, they are the reason I'm still afloat. Uh, I, I, I moved and relocated to another city five or so years ago, but um, my foundation was Alabama. It started here. When I'll be very honest with you, Tabitha, there wasn't much here. And my agent was in Nashville, but uh, you scraped together whatever you could before you could get that agent. You had to have some sort of resume. Well, I had to get some words, whatever, but it um, it shut us down. It, um, uh, my last audition, it's an interesting story. It's, it's, it's almost like it started right where it stopped, but... Uh, uh, my last audition was for a movie called American Underdog, uh, the Kurt Warner story. And uh, I think SAG made a, I, I mean, tell people I'm from Alabama, not be shy to run from that. And I had every opportunity to do it too. My agent was in Nashville. I could have told him I was in Nashville, Tennessee real quick. And now, what the business doesn't care, but I care. And, right. and, and I wanted them to know that, yeah, we're not just barefooted and, you know, farmers. Perfect. You build it, they will come. That's what we've done, and that's their, their, their coming. And it's it's more and more each day, and also, too, the resources that this state has, you can't hide those. People are going to want those. Those incentives. We have that. We have beaches. We have skyscrapers. We have countryside. We've got waterfalls. We've got oceans. We've got, uh, uh, we've got uh, filmmakers. We've got... Um, I'm, I have remained non-union. I am sitting in this chair, non-union. Alabama is a right-to-work state. 35 to 40% of my income is non-union work. And 
this is their rules, SAG's rules, not mine. And I, I didn't break them. I didn't whatever. I just complied with their rules. And I auditioned for their work and I got hired. Um, shooting film to me anywhere and everything is, is uh, important as far as it's forever. So you try to kind of make it look as right as you possibly, possibly can. You're not wanting to insult the intelligence of the audience, but your resources are limited and you don't have but so much budget and you got to make Birmingham look like Chicago, you know, so you go do that. And we take liberties, but we have to, but uh, we mean it's a uh, home and it's uh, the comfort zone is, I mean, trust me, I work in LA and I have, and it's, it's so fun to come back home. <laughs> I, it's a great place to work. I'll put it that way. Don't want to give any spoiler alerts or anything, but yeah, sometimes cities they say they're in ain't who they where they are, you know. So, uh, uh, Sweet Home Alabama with Reese Witherspoon, Reese Witherspoon, a former scene partner of mine, wasn't a bit of a frame of film of it shot in Alabama. Uh, oh, oh no, I'm sorry. Excuse me, I didn't mean to let that out of bounds. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, they, you know. There has been the pride thing. Uh, anything, anything at home. We did forty-two here. We did. Um, uh, uh, I've done many independents and some student stuff, and um, it's. Um, I don't know. It just always to me seems I got to give something back. I cannot be this blessed. I've got to give something back. So I do this. I do what I'm doing. I'm doing what I'm doing with you right here, right now. I told you I'd help you, and I'm helping you. You mm -hmm. know. So it's why not? W e i k e r t. For those keeping track at home, and uh, I've been in the in the film and video business for over 40 years. I've DP 26 or 27 feature films, depending on who you talk to. Some of them I might not want to claim, but uh, uh, they're there. Yeah, yeah. How many? It has. The pandemic hit everybody, but it hit us really, really uh, in a really negative way because, of course, when you make a film, you have a, a lot of people that come together, and it, it was uh, it was tough for everybody. Uh, uh, the industry largely shut down um, at that during the pandemic I, I shot and directed part of a TV show called The Fishmonger on the Outdoor Channel you should check it out it's really good um, uh, but yeah the pandemic was it was there's still aftershocks because people are still getting sick so it was uh, it was no fun at all I don't recommend it thumbs down <laughs> and then yes uh, there are more people to choose from now than pre-pandemic I don't know if it has anything to do with the pandemic or has more to do with Atlanta being a few hundred miles away. I mean, Atlanta's always been up in here. That's right, that's right. But since Atlanta's been booming, uh, it seems that there are a lot more people doing things in Alabama. Uh, we've got pretty good film incentives, tax incentives, um, and we've got a, a much bigger uh, crew base than we had 20 years ago. That was... Uh, are good. They're not great, but they're good. Uh, they start at a, a certain budget level and, and cap off uh, to the point where I think they're using them all up every year. And that's one of the business models that a lot of filmmakers uh, from other places are coming into Birmingham and Mobile and making mid to low budget projects that, that get a pretty big kickback from the state, which is which is why Atlanta is is booming so much. Um, I'm always adding zeros to my rates. Absolutely. Uh, I've, got, I've got a tremendous uh, drug habit. <laughs> uh, no, the uh, my my rates have gone up simply because I've been doing it a long time and I'm I'm at a level of 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 delivery of, of product, I should say, that, that people are really happy with. And uh, Sit, but an, an indie feature film, a, a, a horror comedy that we're going to shoot here in Alabama. Amazing. Uh, TV work that I have with Fishmonger and Dead Meat and Ranch America and um, Sporting Chef. Okay. Which, which is a production that started in California and had a connection to Alabama and then a producer took it over in Alabama and it's, it's crewed mostly from Alabama people because the results are are really, really good and they don't have to hire crews in L.A. to shoot. Um, for, I guess as far as the state goes, I think it's important just mainly because of the jobs that it brings. And it's, it's not just, you know, if you're a filmmaker, it's not just for a camera job. You know, you have art department, you have makeup department, you have construction, you have lighting. I mean, there's various various fields and directions you can go to just in the film industry itself but as far as personally um to me film it's just kind of a way to bring your family together just to give you a sense of togetherness and 
it's, you know, it can give you the opportunity just to go to escape from reality for just those few minutes that you'd be able to sit down and watch that movie.